I had a few questions for you. Are you the tax assessor collector? <clears throat> Ma'am, can you hear me? Okay, I just wanted to know why you hung up on me on the phone and, and said that uh, get off my high horse. And I was wondering why you're so uncooperative with me and for me to do my business here. There is accountability to this and, and you can't just treat people like this. Sir, excuse you me. Cannot say which of us, I can't tell you you're in public. No, you can't. I, you're in public. Of course I can. No, That's you the can't. officer. Mm -hmm. First Officers, Amendment. Can you escort these out of here, please? Uh, did you can film in public. Uh, you can it's a First Amendment. Anybody, sir, in public, it's, you can film anybody. So I paid the taxes. On the, way, on the way back, the county attorney actually called me, and he was kind of laughing, and he said, hey, uh, you caused, uh, caused quite a stink there. And I said, I don't think it's funny at all. Uh, I think that, you know, you should train your, your, your staff to understand the laws. Why does a mobile home dealer know more than you guys do? Raise your hand if you've ever been lied to or taken advantage of by the tax department. John Fedger here. Welcome back. This video is for mobile home investors, mobile home buyers, and mobile home sellers. In almost every state, if you own a mobile home that's personal property, you probably have to pay personal property taxes every year for that mobile home. Even if there's no land, there's taxes probably owed. Except for some states like New Jersey that don't pay the personal property taxes. But everywhere else, this video is for you. There's fraud, there's misleading, there's manipulation happening around the country. Um, and you can be the judge of that. We're going to talk about some very interesting slash some crazy stories that I don't want you to experience yourself. I want you to have the tools and know how to uh, uh, double check, triple check to make sure that you're not overpaying when it comes to personal property taxes. I'm very lucky to be interviewing on this video uh, active mobile home investors, uh, active mobile home formula investors, Megan and Doug that are both investing in Texas. But again, this does happen around the country and these there's some similarities here. Um, now, in some states, we're going to pick, uh, pick up by talking to Megan. And she is talking about um, when she went to purchase a mobile home from a seller, who's a very nice gentleman, who already escrowed the taxes. And in some states, you have to escrow taxes for the next year before you buy them. Escrow just means kind of putting them aside. So you just have to pay the tax money for next year before you can buy a home. And so we'll pick up the story with Megan that's talking about trying to buy uh, this great deal from a seller. The last deal I did, he escrowed the taxes. And thankfully, he was just so older. He was a cool dude. We got along well. And so I had called him for some information so that I could escrow the taxes to transfer the title. And when I called him and let him know, like I happened to mention I was going to escrow the taxes, he said, oh, no, I already did that. And I was like, when did you do that? And he said, like, last week. And I go, okay, so I just called the lady today and she told me 200 something dollars. And he goes, no, that's the exact amount. I just escrowed it last week. And I said, did you happen to keep, you know, the receipt or something? And he's like, yeah, I'm sure my wife's got it around here somewhere. So sure enough, they sent me the receipt. He had already escrowed the taxes. They were going to have me do it again. And um, he told me at that point, he was like, I am 100% sure they all have that money. At that tax at that county tax office because i have had this problem so many times where we pay and then a few years later they call us back and tell us we didn't pay like 30 or 40 of it and it's like an arbitrary amount where you're not going to go through the trouble of digging up your tax receipts to see that you paid it and it's not worth losing your two three four hundred thousand dollar property or home over so you just pay it you know what i'm saying so that was really interesting <laughs> This is just one random example about Megan having to overpay almost $200 uh, before she found out she actually didn't have to pay anything. And there's a lot of mobile homes out there uh, per county, and there's only like a few tax people. So maybe this was a misunderstanding, maybe fraud or greed. Uh, you can be the judge of that. We'll, we'll talk to Doug right now. Doug's gonna be telling us a simple story about him trying to get a form signed by the county tax worker, a generic simple form that he needs signed before he can go ahead and transfer the title to his name. Any particular story that's been happening with you, Doug? Yeah, sure. I mean, I've had a number of issues. Uh, one thing that kind of gets me is is the counties are, you know, they're they're the, especially the smaller counties. Uh, I, I live north of, uh, Houston and Harris counties, uh, where, where Houston is the biggest county, I have no problems with them. They're pretty good about doing things. The smaller counties seem to have the problem. 
I had one mobile home that was in a county. So first of all, I think these counties are a little bit, uh, uh, you know, it's a mess. They don't like dealing with mobile homes. Uh, there's always problems with them. I, I understand that, but here I am as a dealer, have my dealer's license, have my lot. I'm trying to do things the right way. So when it gets to be, you know, uh, a point where, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning what I'm doing and trying to do it the right way. I had one that was in a different county um, that it was that it was uh, it was supposed to be placed in this county, but it actually wasn't in there. So I said, well, I know I'm going to the state's going to ask for this form in the, in the county where it says it, even though it's not. So I went there to go get the, the paperwork. I said, listen, can you just give me this letter that says that it's not on the tax roll? And I'm going to file that with the state and go do the appropriate. And she said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I said, well, why not? And she said, because you're going to have to go to this other county and pay the taxes first and then bring that to us and we'll show it to you. And I said, no, that's none of your business where that happens. And she said, well, we don't want to uh, make sure that you're not stealing, ripping us off. I don't know, something like that. I said, look, I'm going to give this to the state. They're going to supersede you. You're a county for the state. I'm going to send in my information. Anyway, she, she said, I'm not going to do that. I said, well, I'm not leaving until, you know, we get this done. And uh, it finally, she just said, fine. And she did it out of, uh, you know, just being a little bit, you know, being just upset about it, I guess. But, um, you know, it did. why did it have to be like that? So Here's just another story about dealing with a rude, unprofessional, unhelpful uh, county worker that you're trying to trust, you're trying to get help from. What does this sound like to you? Just poor training, uh, theft, manipulation, greed? Uh, you be the judge. Comment below, please. Now we're going to go ahead and jump to Megan, who's telling us a story of where she almost had to pay an extra almost $500 that she never really had to pay. It was just money that was created and then all of a sudden, like, owed. And then all of a sudden, oh, no, maybe that's that, that's not exactly right. So uh, listen to the story and you be the judge for yourself. What was the story about the about the taxes? And can you kind of walk us through what you experienced? Yeah, so um, this last deal that I did, um, I think it was like mid August when we got into it. And, um, so just doing our due diligence, you know, we called and found out what, how much it was going to be to escrow the taxes, um, just to have everything ready. And, you know, I'm on hold, I'm waiting and she goes, okay, so it's going to be $454. And I was like, that's kind of high for a mobile home. And I thought, you know, at that point she was going to, explain it or elaborate why like maybe it's the area maybe it's this maybe it's that and she just didn't say anything so it's like an awkward silence and I said okay on top of that she also told me that I had to come in person to pay anyway so I held that off for a while and I wouldn't recommend doing that but honestly thank god I did because uh just a minute ago like what last week I think it was I called you and um I finally called to pay the taxes because I finally got with them and I said, Hey, what do you mean? I need to come in person. Are you sure? Cause you know, and I talked to somebody else and she was like, no, 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 no. just pay it online. Or here's the phone number, call this number and pay it. And I was like, okay, at this point, I guess the tax bill had already come out. So it wasn't escrowing anymore. There was an exact amount. And, um, thank God for that because I go to pay the taxes and there were $17 from back taxes owed. So I paid that. And then it kept telling me that that was all that was owed. So uh, in the meantime, you know, I'm going back and forth trying to figure out where is this 454 coming from and why isn't anybody mentioning it? And I called them to pay it. And they, at the time, because the title wasn't transferred because the taxes weren't escrowed, they told me uh, that because I wasn't the name on the tax bill or whatever, that they couldn't give me the information, but I could just pay, I could just tell them how much I wanted to pay. And I was like, well, what do you mean how much I want to pay? Like, I, I want to pay zero dollars. Can that, you know, will that work? <laughs> so anyway, um, they, they kept telling me that they weren't going to tell me how much was owed, that I could just tell them how much, you know, I wanted to pay. I just felt uncomfortable paying 400, almost $500 when they weren't guaranteeing me how much was owed or anything like that. So I think in the middle of all that mom life happened, I just stopped the phone call. I was like, okay, I think I'll call you later. You know, this, this was happening. <laughs> so anyway, um, thank God for that. Tanya called me in the middle of it. And I told her, I was like, I'm just trying to get these taxes paid. But you know, it's like this and that. And I was explaining to her and she goes, oh, just go online. And I was like, okay, well, at that point, I had already paid the 17 because they were telling me the 17 was there, but they weren't mentioning the other amount. 
So I go online and I had already paid the 17 that morning and it said 2022 was clear. And I was like, okay, well then what do you mean? Like 2020, I'm looking, I'm searching for this $500. Like I'm ready to pay it or something and it's not on there. So I call them up and I say, Hey, I just wanted to make sure the taxes were paid. Cause at this point I'm like, if nobody's got it on there, then I'm good. Let's just get that tax receipt. So I call them up and I ask them and they said, you know, yeah, 2022 taxes are paid. So the only thing owed was that 17 from the previous year. And I said, okay. And then I went and I looked at the previous years over like the last 10 years, how much taxes she had paid. And she had never paid more than $200. And that was a really high year. Like the last actual year she paid was like $30. The year before that was like 50 something dollars. I mean, and so I was like, how did I not think of that? But so, so that $400 number was pulled out of a hat or something. I mean, quite literally, because I also, on top of looking at what she had paid previous years, I, um, what else did I do? They had a tax estimator tool. I don't know if every website, every county has this. I'm not sure. But this one did, and um, I did the tax estimator tool, and it came out to about $150. What a confusing feeling Megan must have had. She's doing her proper due diligence. Um, she she crosses her T's, dots her I's, uh, and then the state go ahead and throws her this you know curveball of almost a $500 payment. And good for her uh, that we worked together. She did what she had to do to figure out that no, that actually wasn't owed. So what are some things that you can do in your state to make sure that this doesn't happen to you? Well, you want to call up to verify, call up for, to your local title department where you transfer mobile home titles. That might be the DMV, that might be a more special office in your local area. Call up the local branch to find out which mobile, uh, which taxes are owed, how many back years, if there are any, and what does that come to? And then try to find out the years previous to that that were paid. Do those taxes match up? You know, is the, the last five years, is it like 200 and then all of a sudden it jumps to 600. And if so, what's that about? What's different? What's weird? Do late fees add up? You should be able to understand the late fees that you're paying. If this is a couple hundred dollars, this just shouldn't be written down in crayon somewhere. This should be understood of, you know, how these late fees accrue. Um, and then if you did pay something, you can see, well, no, I actually did pay this from the previous year or the seller did previously pay this. If you're unsure about something, you can check online in some states on the personal property uh, or tax collector's website. You can type in the VIN number or the serial number or the address and it'll show the personal property taxes that are owed or that are past due. Some states aren't all online and some counties or mun local municipalities aren't online. So if you can't go online to check this out, call up your local state tax office, the local main branch of the state tax department to ask them, hey, this is my personal property. I want to you know, talk to the person in charge to see exactly what I owe and, and, and why. And don't be delayed. Find out if there's a way to expedite the, the process. In some states that the taxes have to be paid one of a various couple ways, um, but you shouldn't have to wait to pay for taxes. You shouldn't, you know, the, the person that's in the office shouldn't be coming back in like three weeks or there's only one person that can help you. Uh, things like that, there's workarounds. A lot of people, especially in this video, you heard stories of people not wanting to go the extra mile or even just go like the mile of doing their jobs, it sounds like. With regards to like getting this done quickly, there should be ways for you to expedite things, get things done quickly so you can pay taxes and then buy the home or pay taxes and then sell the home, depending on what you're trying to do. Now, I wanted to tell you this right now because everyone watching should know how to protect themselves and know what taxes to pay. So I wanted you to know that. Now the rest of this video is still pertaining to mobile homes and it's still pertaining to crazy stories where you have tax professionals giving advice of, hey, you're stupid for doing this deal. So we'll get into that in just a minute when I interview Doug more. Uh, but I am going to be jumping over to a story where we talk to Doug and Doug is talking about uh, in Texas, there's a new law that passed in 2021. Uh, a couple letters went out to every single tax department. And it was the state tax office that said, you know, all the local tax departments from now on, starting in early 2021, if you, if somebody owes, let's say 10 years for back mobile home property taxes, if there's not a judgment, if you haven't legally gone after them in court, then wipe off all but four years. 
So the county tax departments, it was the state telling the county, hey, you know, from now on, if somebody wants to clear up their back taxes, you can only charge them legally for the last four years. Even if they owe six years, those other two years are wiped away per the state rules. And so now we're going to jump over to Doug's story where you hear the shadiness and downright uh, huge egos that, that some of these city, smaller county city tax workers have um, and what Doug did about it. They sent a letter. It's stated in the statute. I found it. It's on the website. It's not that hard to find. So the first time I went, I bought a mobile home um, in, in Galveston County, which is about an hour and a half away from me. I knew there were taxes due on it, but I looked at the statute. And I said, okay, so I'm only responsible for these four years. So I went down to the county to pay the taxes and they said, no, you are owed seven years. And I was like, no, that's not true. So I produced the letter on my phone and I, and I showed the clerk and I said, okay, so this is a state law. And this says, and it says you're in violation of the law. She said, well, we're not going to do that. And I said, okay, well, I'm not leaving until I'm not paying an extra thousand dollars is what it was going to be for me to pay these back taxes. So anyway, I got irritated and uh, finally uh, nobody was, I said, I want to talk to the county attorney and all this stuff. And, you know, it's just not right. So finally I paid the taxes and I left. And, and because there was no way that they were going to do anything, basically, just leave. So I paid the taxes on the way on the way back. The county attorney actually called me and he was kind of laughing and he said, Hey, uh, you cause uh, cause quite a stink there. And I said, I don't think it's funny at all. Uh, I think that, you know, you should train your, your, your staff to understand the laws. Why does a mobile home dealer know more than you guys do? Anyway, he said, you know, I apologize. We're going to refund your money. And, uh, you know, there's, we, we, I need to train these guys. And I said, you know, it's not like I made up a letter. I had it from the state. You should have known this stuff. And, and I don't know if they deal with enough mobile homes or, you know, people just pay the taxes and they, they, I mean, how many times have people paid extra taxes? Like Megan was saying that they, that they didn't do the right thing. And so uh, this happened again. I bought one and uh, went to Liberty County and the tax assessor is actually in the office. It's a, it's a small office there. And, you know, I'm telling the clerk, I'm not paying this. And he comes out and I show him the letter and he says, I don't have my glasses. We're not going to do this unless you pay it. And I said, okay. He says, so they sent us all the taxing entities. I said, I'm sure they did. It says it here. You got this letter on, on the first of, of, and I have the date and I have it all. And I'm trying to be nice. And finally I said, you know, why can you not understand it? I said, I said, are, are you afraid that because you didn't, do the taxes and, and save the money for the county that you were delinquent in your duties that maybe the taxpayers will find out and you'll be in trouble. He didn't like that at all, but you know, that's <laughs> so they're, they're not willing to work with you. And I'm not sure all of them are like that, but I find out that these, these, these taxing entities are not here to, to help you. They're not willing to dig. They're not willing to do anything. So um, you ask me a question, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely not. Not anymore. I, I have my paperwork. I know the law. Um, I'm not trying, but I'm not going to pay extra stuff that I don't owe simply because of the fact they don't want to do their job. And that's kind of what I feel like that, that happens and people just go along because that's what the county says. And to me, that's just not what I found true. I did have the state call actually um, one of the, the counties around here and, and uh, told them what they need to do. And they were, when I got there, they had all the paperwork ready, but why does it need to go to that? It was, it was amazing um, because of the fact that I had two that were there and, and uh, um, I had had trouble before and um, they had actually called them and told them what, no, that they're not right. I'm not trying to be a problem. And that's what gets me. I'm not over there yelling and screaming and, and trying to you know, tell them how to do their job. I want to work with them and, and, and come up and, you know, give them the information they have. I'm, I do this probably more than they do. Um, I know what forms are in, required. I know how to do it. I know what the state wants. And, and so I'm trying to go in there, uh, but I know when something doesn't add up, wait a second, these, you know, and, and, and this is what the tax assessor actually told me in Liberty County. He said, why would you buy a mobile home that has so much taxes? That's just dumb. <laughs> and I told him, I said, well, first of all, A, it's none of your business what I do with my money. And B, because I know the law and there's only four years of work doing it. He said, no, you're not going to, you're going to pay all of them. And I said, that's incredible to me that you're just, you know, I have, the, and I had it. I have the, I have the letter. 
I got it. I carry it with me. And I showed it to him. And he said, I don't have my glasses. That was his response to me. And I was like, wow. So next time I'm bringing my video camera in there and I'm going to not cause a scene, but I'm going to document it and say, you know, because it's just not right. And, and I'm not trying to be the guy that's coming in there to do an audit and, and you know, my right. I, you know, I'm a business guy. I don't have time to spend, you know, arguing with these guys and, and trying to educate them on, on the law. I would rather just pay what I owe. And if it does have all these taxes, then I already know that I'm going to have to pay them. And maybe it's a good enough deal that I pay the taxes to, to buy it. But it's really of none of their concern what I do with it. And I'm just, you know, I can't, I'm just flabbergasted that this guy would actually say that to me, you know, instead of saying, and be helpful and be a, be a person that, that wants to help people. It just seems to me that they want to have a chip on their shoulder. And nobody's going to tell them what to do, especially some redneck with a cowboy hat coming up there telling him how to do his job. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to do what's right. Isn't that incredible? Doug got the actual state tax office to three-way phone call the, the local county department. And then they, 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 they talked, the, the state talked to the county to say, yeah, this is actually the real deal. Doug's actually teaching these county workers what's going on. That's something that I maybe should have said earlier in this video. I've seen a lot of around the country where kind of one hand doesn't talk to the other, where the county taxes doesn't talk to the state office, or if there's school taxes that doesn't talk to the county department, they don't talk to one another. And so they don't always have the same information. One person can say you owe money and the other one is, oh, you're fine. You don't owe anything. When in reality that, you know, you do possibly owe taxes and they're, they're, they're accruing. So uh, if you have questions, I hope that this video made sense. If you have any questions about mobile home or mobile home investing, always feel free to reach out at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. That's support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.